was written after the Sandy Hook massacre in Newtown, Connecticut, where 21st graders were among those murdered by a mentally disturbed man. The regulation took years to write and was just finalized in December. It would have added people who get Social Security disability benefits for mental impairment and who are deemed unfit to handle their own financial affairs to the National Background Check database, about 75,000 names. Republicans say that would have violated their Second Amendment rights. Repealing this regulation will merely ensure that disabled citizens' Second Amendment rights are, in fact, protected. But the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence calls it heartless. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy's constituents include Newtown parents. This is so deeply morally offensive to people in Connecticut, frankly, anybody that's lived through these tragedies. Today, it's on the way to the White House for President Trump's signature. We are going to protect our Second Amendment, which is under siege. Making good on a campaign promise. And with Republicans in charge, ushering in a new era for gun rights advocates in Washington after President Obama spent years trying to convince Congress to pass stricter gun laws. Every time I think about those kids, it gets me mad. Even after tearful, emotional pleas, Congress didn't act. Now Murphy fears even more setbacks. I think this is just the first step. And now the only thing that Congress has done on guns since Sandy Hook is to make it easier for very mentally ill people to get guns. It wasn't just the National Rifle Association and gun rights groups who opposed this. The American Civil Liberties Union also argued that it would infringe uh, on the rights of mentally disabled people and contribute to stereotypes that mentally ill people are violent. Matt Howard. Casey Hunt in Washington. Casey, thanks very much. Happening today, you might find